Hi everyone, welcome back to Country Cow Designs. I'm Jo. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial where we're going to be sewing these little pouches. So this is a free pouch pattern of mine that I actually bought out about a year ago, but uh, my husband recently started sewing too and he said to me, you need to do a video tutorial for this. So here we are. He's going to be helping me with this tutorial um, and he made this lovely little pouch during the tutorial, which you'll see coming up. Now, if you're new to sewing, this is the perfect pattern for you. If you're intimidated by sewing clothes, like I am, then this is great. You know, so, sewing clothes, it's, it's scary, it's complicated. There's the whole sizing issue, um, like just sticking together the patterns after you print them. Oh my goodness, there's so much involved that, that feels very intimidating for me. So if instead you wanna go down the bag route, this is a great, great place to start. This is a really simple pouch pattern. It's got a really nice, neat lining and a little slip pocket. It's quick to make. It's great for gifts and it's just the perfect place to start. Now we're gonna go back to the like basics on this video and we're gonna be covering sewing terms like seam allowance and basting and things like that and hopefully answering all of your questions. So if there's anything that we've missed, make sure that you leave it in the comments and let us know what your questions are and we'll try and answer those for you. If you're a bit more advanced in your sewing and you wanna try something more complicated, I do have a pattern coming out very soon in just a few days after this video for this bowler bag, the Conan bowler bag. Now that's not a free pattern, but I hope that you would think it's worth it when you see how much work we put into that pattern. So I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial and thank you so much for joining us. So the first thing you need to do is download the pattern. So you can find this on my website, countrycowdesigns.com and it's free to download. There are two versions, A4 paper and letter paper. Letter paper is what is used in the USA and Canada. A4 paper is used everywhere else in the world. All they are are just the different sized papers. We just, we use different sized paper in different countries. And the reason I provided the pattern in both is because occasionally you can find that you get like a sizing difference and your pattern prints out slightly different size because you're using a different paper. So you just need to load up the document, the, either the A4 or the letter paper, depending where you are, and print it at no scaling, 100%. I really recommend printing it on a computer and using Adobe Reader. That is generally the safest way to make sure everything comes out the right size. And then you can check on your pattern pieces that the measurements match. And therefore you'll know that you've definitely printed it at the correct size. If you're printing on a mobile device, you'll often find that it prints at 97% or 102% and you'll have difficulty changing it. So that's why I recommend using a computer if you have one. So you've got your four pattern pieces, A, B, C, and D. And you'll notice that A has this large section cut out. So the reason we've got that is because this is so that you can feature like a special print. So if you've got, if you've got a panel that's a special print, you can place the pattern piece when you're cutting it out and you can see exactly what you've got here and whether it fits in to this gap because you know then that this is gonna be showing on the front of the panel. So have a quick read through the pattern notes on page one. We're using a quarter inch seam allowance for this, except when we're basting and when we're top stitching, then we will use a one eighth of an inch. Make sure that you back stitch everything. And if you decided to use cork or vinyl for your exterior, make sure that your machine can handle that. So you've got your cutting chart on page two and the first thing you want to do is cut everything out. Now it's, it says in the chart whether or not you need to add woven interfacing. So you can see that I've already fused the woven interfacing to the back of each of my pattern pieces. And then on the main lining panels, I've also added the fleece. So I fused that on so that we're ready to go. Lastly, you'll need your zipper. So I'm using zip tape. If you've not used zip tape before, you just cut it to size and then you open the zip and you just put the rounded edge of the zip onto the zip tape one end at a time And then if you push it down on a flat surface, you can just pull that zip on. 
and then you're ready to go. Okay, so for this pattern, I would recommend having size 75 and size 90 universal needles. Those are what I generally choose to use. So we've got something slightly thicker when we're doing the end top stitch. And now that everything's cut out and ready to go, we can start making our pouch. So I'll set my paper pattern pieces aside and I've got my two lining, my two main exterior, my two zip pocket pieces. I'll set all of those aside. And for step two, step one, by the way, is cutting and interfacing. So for step two, we're just gonna prepare the zip. So you should have your two zip tabs and your number three zip. If you're using a ready-made zip, you'll have the little end stops on. Personally, I prefer to chop them off and then that way I'm not gonna risk sewing over them later, but that's personal choice. So the first thing you want to do is place one of your zip tabs right sides together with the end of this zip. Okay, and we're gonna sew through that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so if you're wondering why my hands suddenly got really hairy, that's because my husband Adam is actually doing the sewing. So um, now that we've got this sewn into place, he's back stitched at the beginning and end as well. You just wanna press that back. Okay, so if we turn this over, we now want to fold this edge over by a quarter of an inch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring that over so that these two edges are lined up. Now this is where I love using these metal look nylon zips. So they're not actually metal, which is why I can sew over the teeth really easily. If you're using an actual metal zip, you're going to be, want to be very careful you can either hand crank over and just make sure that you miss the actual zip, or you can ensure that you're using it with the end stops further in, and then that way you're only sewing over the fabric part of the zip. So once that is clipped into place, you just want to top stitch along this edge here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and you're gonna be grabbing this underneath side. Now, if you're worried that you're not gonna catch it, or if you sew this with an eighth of an inch and you don't cap to the bottom, just do another top stitch at a quarter of an inch further in, and that won't be a problem. So don't be afraid if this is your first time um, sewing because Adam is brand new to sewing and, and he's doing great. This is a great first project if you are new to sewing. So you can see here that we've used a slightly longer stitch length because when you're top stitching, you tend to use a longer stitch length. So this for us is a four mil on my machine. That's the longest it goes. Whereas for most of the construction on a cotton pouch like this, I would use a two or a 2.5 stitch length. Now, what we're gonna do is repeat this process on the other side. So I'm just gonna clip that on there. I'm gonna sew it again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance then we're gonna fold it on the edge, fold it back under and top stitch it. So that's your zip finished. Now make sure you cut your zip at the correct length because I cut mine too long by mistake, which meant I actually ended up with the zip too long. Your zip should now be eight and a half inches. So you just wanna trim off these zip tabs so they're the same width as your zip. So that should now be eight and a half inches from beginning to end. Now set that aside and we'll move on to the slip pocket. For this next step, you're going to need one of your main lining pieces and your two slip pocket pieces. Now the slip pocket 
is how we turn this pouch out. So um, if you're thinking you don't want a slip pocket, that's fine. But what you're going to then have to do is construct the pouch differently. So just, just be aware of that. So I'd recommend just fitting the slip pocket. And it's nice to have a little section to put something different inside. So for both of these pieces, you just want to fold up the bottom edge just by a tiny bit, about a quarter of an inch, and press it so it's like that. And on one of these pieces, you need to draw the diagram that's shown on the paper pattern piece. So it's one inch down and one inch from each side. And this is a quarter inch tool. So this is just going to be a guide for our slip pocket. Now I'm going to fold that in half and just make a little crease to mark my center. And I'll do the same thing with the lining. So now I can match up my center creases and I want that to be half an inch down. That looks about right. And I'll just pin that into place. Now you want to sew this exterior rectangle here. I recommend not starting on one of the corners because if you start on the corner, you can kind of end up with a bit of a messy join. So I just kind of start here work my way all the way around and back. You want a nice short stitch length, maybe two and a half mil. But on these corners, you want to decrease your stitch length to about a one mil. So one millimeter, I know it's really, really small, but what it does is it just tightens up the corners and it will make your slip pocket neater in the long run. Now that's sewn, I'm going to cut down this center line. And then what I'm going to do is um, cut these triangle lines and I'm going to get as close as I possibly can to that stitching in the corner, but do not cut your stitching. So don't, don't get so close that you cut it. So I'll just start in the center. And you're going all the way through to the back. Now you might find this easier using a craft knife or something like that if you don't have any really sharp scissors. So take your pins out of here and what we're going to do is push this through. Now this is where you'll know if you've not gotten close enough to those corners, or if you used a longer stitch length around the corners, you won't get a neat finish. Because what we're gonna do is push this through. Um, but first of all, just kind of crease it on each side. So just push against the stitches there and give it a good press with your fingers. You could use an iron if you wanted to. And then shove that through. Now, because of the fleece, you will get a little bit of bulk but hopefully you can still get a nice neat finish. Now, what I do is I sort of roll these seams with my fingers. And then when I've got a nice neat edge, I'm gonna press that with the iron. I'm just focusing on one edge at a time, so I'm just going to focus on the bottom edge first. 
and then I'll go to this top one So you you might get a tiny bit of creasing here. You can see, I think this is the second time Adam's ever sewn one of these rectangles. You know, it's not gonna be absolute perfection. Even after I've been sewing for a few years, mine aren't always perfect. But you can see it's pretty good. And that's because he's got really close to those corners and just taking the time to press it out. So what we're gonna do next is top stitch around this pocket face and that will finish off the pocket. You want to use a eighth of an inch seam allowance with a nice long stitch length because we're st top stitching. Okay, so I would recommend using a matching thread for yours, um, but it's good for you to be able to see on here clearly the top stitching. When you get to these corners, you can just hand crank it because you might find that your needle doesn't land exactly where you need it to. Um, you know, it might be that your stitch length ends up with the third stitch over here. So hand cranking around these little corners is a great idea. Also, um, if you don't want to back stitch, because you can see where, where he's back stitched, it's got, you know, a couple of layers of stitching. Maybe you want like a really, really neat finish. What you need to do is leave your threads long. And then when you go to the back, you simply tug on them. Now, mine's not going to work the same because we have back stitched, but I'm hoping that it will work just enough. There you go. So when you tug on it, a little loop will appear. And then you pull that loop through and you just tie those off at the back. And the same would happen for your other thread, although I'm pretty sure mine won't work because of the back stitching, but yeah, and it's gotten caught over there. But you just need to tug on it, pull it through, and then you can tie it off on the back so it'll be completely hidden. If you're not bothered about back stitching, just go ahead and back stitch. Okay, so flip that over and then get your other slip pocket piece and you just want to put them right sides together like this. So they should match. Make sure that the fold is at the bottom on this one as well. And you're just going to clip that on the top and the two sides. If you like my little clip tray, um, that's going to be a free tutorial from Adam soon on how to make these from leather. So keep an eye out for that on our YouTube channel as well. And these wonder clips are just brilliant for bag making. Okay, so we're not closing the bottom because we're going to turn the pouch through there. What you're going to do is take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to sew up the sides across the top and back down the other side. Make sure you back stitch really well at the beginning and the end.
you might notice that our fleece has kind of snuck in a little bit there. It's just kind of ruffled up. When that sort of thing happens, just don't worry too much about it, you know? It's not gonna affect the pouch in any way. So grab your other lining piece, both of your exterior pieces and your zip. And we're gonna, first of all, mark the centers on the top of all these panels. So the easiest way I find to do this is to center it on my mat. And then I can just, I can see that there's 10 squares there. So I'll go five squares in and mark it. Now this is an important step because it is gonna make a difference to uh, make sure that your whole pouch is straight and that your zip is nice and straight and centered. And do the same to mark the center of your zip. So grab one of your exterior panels. And what we're gonna do is put the zip right sides together. Now, if you have a front that you specifically want on the front of the pouch and it's different to the back, then um, you want your zip to close to the left, technically, because that is technically the way it's supposed to be. Personally, I don't mind which way my zip opens, um, but yeah, if you want it to open to the left, just, just bear that in mind now. So I'm gonna match up those center marks and just clip that together. So you should have a nice even gap on both sides, should be the same size. And what Adam's now gonna do is just baste that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, as he gets near the zip pull, you'll notice that he leaves his needle in, lifts up his presser foot, moves the zip, and then puts his presser foot back down. That makes sure that you get a nice, neat finish as you go. So if you're wondering why we baste things, it's because we just want to like tack that in place before we put the lining piece on. And yes, you could sew both at once, but what you generally find is then you get like the zip just slipping a little bit or something moves out of place. And so for the extra time that it takes to fix it, it it's easier just to baste it. Um, you might notice that Adam basted with a quarter inch. It doesn't really matter. Um, so long as your basting is like the same or less than the stitch that you're going to use then generally you're fine you just don't want it showing through later on so grab one of your lining pieces and you want that to go on top so it's matched up to the exterior piece so the lining and the exterior are right sides together and the zip is just sandwiched in between them I generally find if I have a couple of clips on the sides, that just kind of helps everything stay in place when I'm sewing. So they're right sides together, the zips in between. Watch out for your zip pull as you go and make sure that you leave your needle in as you are maneuvering it. And you're gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance.
Okay, so you'll notice that it's stitched twice on ours. Um, just if you need to sew it more than once, um, again, like if you're a beginner like Adam, you know, there's nothing wrong with sewing it more than once if you think that your first line wasn't quite right. And if it's not quite quarter of an inch, don't worry about it. So long as it's the same on both sides of the zip when we do this, then it, it won't matter. Um, the important thing is to try and get it straight. Now, the way that I get it straight is I use my standard presser foot and I find the edge of the zip like that. And then I run it along there with the needle pushed as far to the left. So if your needle moves, you can move it all the way to the left and then your presser foot will be used as a guide. If you don't have that option, you can use just a standard zipper foot and you could maybe draw your seam allowance on before you sew it. And then that way you can just like follow the line nice and straight. Totally up to you. Different things work for different people. So, you know, try different things when you're learning to sew. So you wanna push that lining up away and we wanna press this to get a nice neat edge. So if you want to, you can grab your iron and press this down. You're gonna to start to realize there's a lot of ironing in involved in sewing, or at least in sewing bags. Now we're going to top stitch this. So you wanna make sure that your lining's up there, but your seams are coming down this way towards the exterior. So when you top stitch this, you're gonna be sewing right through these seams and holding them into place. So an eighth of an inch top stitch, back stitch at the beginning and end, and you want a longer stitch length because you're top stitching. So again, I use a four millimeter stitch length when I'm top stitching. So when you're backstitching, what you want to do is kind of go, as you're finishing, go right to the edge and then just backstitch three stitches. You don't need to do any more than that. When you start, you can start sort of um, a little bit in, go back three and then go forward. It's personal preference, but you know, backstitching, what it does is it just, it secures those stitches in place so they're not going to come out later. Now, what we're going to do is sort of, just push those two down like that. Okay, and we're going to attach the other exterior piece. Now, if you at this point are starting to wonder why these are different sizes, you may notice that the lining comes in like this and is smaller. That's because you need to make room for the foam and things like that. A lining in a bag always needs to be smaller for it to fit neatly. So that's, that's why that's that way. So grab your other exterior piece and match that centre mark to the centre mark on the other side of your zip. It's going to be right sides together. So if you're reading a bag pattern and it says RST, that means right sides together. WST means wrong sides together. And then you get kind of right side up, wrong side up. There's lots of like lingo and acronyms that um, you'll sort of pick up as you're bag making. So take that over to the sewing machine and baste that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When you're basting, you don't need to backstitch because it's just a temporary stitch to hold it in place. It's not anything important. So at this point, you're starting to see what your pouch is going to look like. It's kind of exciting. Um, so what we're going to do, do you know what I have just noticed is that it kind of looks like it's a little bit off, doesn't it? Like it's a, this one's a little bit further to the right. I'm not going to worry about it. There is, there is a lot of forgiveness in this. I mean, yeah, okay, they're definitely slightly off. There's a lot of forgiveness in bag making. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, maybe I should go back and fix it. I think it's going to be fine. You can see... <laughs> 
somehow my symptom marks clearly didn't match up because this gap is smaller than this gap. So that's how not to do it. But what we're going to do now, we've flipped that over. So we're looking at the lining piece that's already attached. Take your remaining lining piece and place that down so it's right sides together and just clip that into place. And you want to sew this top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now again, you're going to have the zip underneath. So you might find it easier to sew from the side without fleece because you can butt your presser foot up against that. And remember when you get to the zip pull, you're going to need to leave your needle in and wiggle the pull out from underneath. Right, once you've got that sewn, you're going to do the same as you did for the other side and pull the exterior piece away. So make sure that your lining is over here. We're just top stitching the exterior piece. You could press this with an iron if you want. And this is where you can kind of see that your two sides of the zip should be the same size. That's why I really like using my standard presser foot with the needle over because it ensures that it's the same size. When I'm using a zipper foot, sometimes I think I'm on a straight line. I'm not, and it just ends up that one side's kind of wider than the other. So top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and we're using a long stitch length. Okay, so now you want to pull your two exterior pieces together. Now, if you feel like you've had enough, you can go get a cup of tea at this point. This is a good point to just sort of stop and take a little break. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically just do like the final construction. So this is the final step and then we're done. What I'm gonna do is match up these two exterior panels on all of the corners and everything and clip them together. When you get to this top section, you want to make sure that the zip tabs are going towards the lining. So they should naturally fall that way. Hopefully you can just see it's going that way. So those little zip tabs, you'll notice that they're kind of inset. And that's because we're not going to sew over them. You do not want to sew over those little zip tabs. So as you're coming past here, if you don't think your standard presser foot will make it, then um, you'll want to change to a zipper foot to sew past here. But on both sides, you want to make sure that you're not sewing through them. So now the exterior is attached, we're going to clip the two lining pieces together. Now you can see that thankfully, although my panels were a little bit wonky, to be honest, it hasn't turned out wonky they're actually matching up quite nicely so there is always like a little bit of room for error with these things and um, I've just learned to like not worry too much because it'll all work out in the end unless it's something really bad then um yeah I kind of find that you can get away with quite a lot okay so now it's all clipped together we're gonna sew the whole thing with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So you're going to sew this long edge, then you're going to stop and you're going to sew this edge up here and down here. 
So you're not sewing these. You're leaving these corners open because we're going to box them. So, so don't touch these. Make sure that you backstitch well at each section. You don't need to cut your threads when you get here though. So you can you can backstitch here and then you can just like lift your presser foot up, move it over, backstitch here and start again. It means then that you don't have to keep trimming your threads all the time and then and then putting it back in. So for me, that's a much easier way. Now just make sure that you definitely don't sew through your zip tabs. Now you shouldn't if you're using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, but it's just something to be aware of. So you might have noticed as Adam got to the lining, because it's a little bit higher, he used the hump jumper. So the hump jumper or bulky seam aid has um, like a thin side and a thick side. And what it does is you put it underneath the presser foot and then it, it means that the presser foot is level. So it's not like climbing uphill, which is what would happen if you didn't use this. This prevents um, skip stitches and things like that. So it's really, really handy. And then when you come back down the other side, you can put it in front and sew along as well. So that's why it's got these gaps so that your needle can go through here. So when you don't, you know, you don't lift your, you just lift your presser foot on the corners, you just have these little tags here. And you, you just can remove the thread, but it just saves a lot of time, I find, rather than having to take my, you know, take everything out and start again. So now what we do is we go through the slip pocket. Now I should have mentioned that you need to leave your zip open, which I forgot to do, but that's fine. Um, I often forget to leave my zips open when I'm turning things out. So I'm just gonna figure out where my zip is. I think it must be on this end. Yeah, there it is. Now what you can do normally, I'm not gonna be able to show you, I don't think, but you can kind of find the little underneath part of the zip and you can just wiggle it open like that. Another option is to kind of go through here and open it up. Or if you get really stuck on a bag, you can you can just kind of do it with the fabric in the way you can just kind of grab the zip and pull it open. So if you forget to leave your zip open, it's just not a problem. Don't, don't undo any stitching in order to fix it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it out through the slip pocket. But the last thing we need to do before that is to box your corners. Now boxing corners is quite a good technique for bags, quite common. What we're gonna do, it's gonna like sort of pull this out. These seams, you want them to be open on both sides and you want them to match and line up. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a clip on there. So you can see here that this matches here. I'm just going to clip that. This is quite a small box corner, so it's just going together really easily. If you've got a really big bag with a big box corner, it might have to be a bit more intricate. Okay. Now I'm going to box all four of these corners. Now the reason I put these extra clips down here it's just to mean, it just means that the fabric will stay in place. So if I just clipped, you know, these bits together, then when I remove this to sew, it's gonna kind of try and unfold itself. So I like to put another clip further down. Now, when I go to the machine to sew this, I'm not gonna have any difficulty because it's just gonna stay in place. Okay, so you're gonna sew across these box corners with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So, what you're doing is you're just sewing right across here with three eighths. Make sure you back stitch well, and you're going to do that on all four corners.
Okay, so now you can see kind of what shape your pouch is gonna be. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it through this slip pocket. So it's quite a big opening, it shouldn't be too hard. This is called birthing a bag. But when you're doing it for a full size bag through a tiny, tiny pocket, it is considerably more difficult than this. So put that in mind of the future. <laughs> what you wanna do is um, shove your hand through the slip pocket and kind of push all the corners out in your exterior. And then you wanna shove your lining in. Now you can have all the fleece in there, so it's kind of, kind of feel all puffy. And you're gonna to have to spend a minute sort of getting it all neat. And you're also gonna need a turning tool for those tabs. So I've got this little thing. I think you can grab these on Amazon if you look for sewing turning tool. And um, you can kind of use them just to push your zip tabs out and push those corners out. See, there should be a teeny tiny little hole at the end. That is how it is designed to be. And it just means that then your zip tab can come all the way up. Now, if you've sewn through your zip tab, that won't happen and you won't be able to get that nice neat finish. So I'm just gonna use the blunt end to try and push that seam out. Now with a bit of work, you should be able to get that seam to come out nice and neat. All of your seams should be kind of neat on the ends. So before we give this a press, we're just gonna pull that slip pocket out and do it up. So grab your clips and now you can see why we folded the edges of this pocket in because it makes it really easy to sew shut and get that nice neat finish. Okay, so you want to sew across here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now this stitching is going to be shown, it's going to be on show, but it's going to be inside a pocket so no one's going to, no one's going to notice it. And make sure that you back stitch well at the beginning and the end. So if you're a real perfectionist, you might want to hand stitch that clothes. Some people, they use, um, I think it's called a ladder stitch. I am not one for hand stitching, as you can probably tell. So it doesn't bother me that, you know, yeah, I'm going to feel that seam in the bottom. But you know what? It's just a tiny little pocket. And um, I would use that just for like my mascara or things like that, or like a makeup brush. Um, I guess if you're making it for a guy, um, if you made this out of like waterproof canvas, it could be a little toiletries bag and he could put like his razor in there or something. So, you know, there's lots of little uses um, that you can use that pocket for, but nobody's really going to notice that seam on the inside. OK, so we want to give this a little press with the iron because, you know, it's looking kind of um, crumpled and messy. So grab some cloth, whatever kind of you got round, maybe a tea towel or something. I'm just going to use these microfiber cloths and shove that inside. <laughs> And then I just find that makes it easier to give it a press. Now I know some people just kind of shove their hand inside and press it, but that seems pretty dangerous with an iron. So I wouldn't recommend that. I probably should have put a little bit more padding inside, but you can kind of see it's just, it's allowing us to give it a press. So that is your finished little pouch. It's pretty cute. Um, I actually really like this print. I think it might be from Dashwood Studio. It's just like a really sweet little print with hedgehogs and things. Um, now, if you wanted like a firmer finish, you could use 
foam, like sewing foam. You can get things like violin and things like that. You could use Decaville Light, which kind of makes your fabric more like leathery. Um, you could use even maybe like some Peltex if you want like really sturdy. Peltex 71F. So there's loads of different stabilizers you could use that would give like a slightly different finish depending what you're going for. This is kind of like um, a spongy finish with the fleece, which for me is just kind of great for a little pouch like this. Um, and it, you know, keeps it nice and light. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me and Adam. And um, if you've got any questions at all or want to know more about bags, just, you know, drop us some comments. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And um, if you want to see more patterns from us in the future, you can subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys.